We are getting a lot of requests about finding airplanes which have crashed a long time ago somewhere in the jungle or in the forest and people are asking whether our magnetometers on the drones can uh, find those airplanes and uh, therefore those airplanes can be recovered maybe even some uh, old legends can be sold that way so the problem with the aviation engine detection and therefore crash site uh, investigation is that if it has been a long time ago it has overgrown with the vegetation and you cannot see it visually from the above and with the magnetometer there is another thing feature there is an issue that uh, we need to know at which uh, altitude we will be able to detect and therefore we can uh, decide whether it's worth going to that area or not. Maybe trees are too tall at that location and therefore we cannot find it uh, even if it is there. To solve this issue and uh, find out whether that's even a feasible thing, we will do an experiment. We have arranged from local uh, aviation museum free radial engines uh, of a different type. Uh, they are of a different size and we will try to find out two things. First thing will be from which altitude we can detect that engine. And second one we need to find out uh, what is minimum distance between survey lines so we can detect that engine on the ground. Another thing what we will test is uh, we will put those engines in two different positions. We will put them right on the ground and we will put them on the angle, uh, imitating if, if for example airplane has hit uh, on the angle the ground and it has stuck the, in some marsh or something like that. Another big problem is that the aviation engines actually doesn't uh, have that much ferrous metal. Therefore there is not a lot of magnetic metal inside those uh, aviation engines and in uh, airplanes in general. They are built from aluminium which is non-ferrous metal. Basically just a shaft is out of a ferrous iron alloy. What we will do, we will put three different engines of different sizes. First one is around 200 kilos in total, second is about 600 and the third one is 900 kilos. And we will fly a drone on top of them directly, starting around 5 meters and we will fly it over those engines until we do not detect those engines. And then we will see how high it will be. That's the first task. Second task will be to identify what is minimum distance between the survey lines to detect. So this is view from the top and we will start flying near engines and we will go further and further away from those engines until we do not see them anymore on uh, magnetometer readings. That way we will find out what is the minimum distance between the survey lines to detect the engines. So when we go to the location uh, we, are sh we can be sure that we didn't miss it just because we made the uh, distance between the survey lines too, 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 too wide. So we are back from the field and I will give you a short recap of what we found out. Its preliminary results and more detailed results will be available in the report. It looks like it's easier to detect engines once if they are on the ground than instead of them being a little bit in vertical. As well we found out that a smaller engine, which as I mentioned is around 200 kilos in total, this radial engine disappears from our readings around 15 uh, to 20 meters range. And the uh, bigger engine, which was around 900 kilos, 
we uh, disappear uh, from readings around 25 to 30 meters of altitude. Good news is that we can still uh, plan a survey with uh, quite wide survey lines. So we still saw the readings from the smallest engine around uh, 10 to 12 meters. So if we want to be really sure that we detect everything in the area, we can make uh, survey lines with uh, 10 meters between them and be sure that we have covered all the area. So those are preliminary uh, findings from uh, today's experiment. Uh, more details will follow in the written uh, report.